Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Screeny. Now, we don't like to judge, but oh, uh, who are we kidding? If you go on Dr. Phil, you're going to get judged. That's just the name of the game, and the participants know that. Some cases really pull on your heartstrings, while others, like the ones you're about to see, leave you wondering how these people are still on the streets. It can really be terrifying when kids go off the rails, but it's sort of fascinating. Join us as we take a look at the most insane kids on Dr. Phil. Before we begin, do us a favor by clicking that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a video on your favorite TV shows. Jesus' girlfriend. There is no what if. I am pregnant. And it is Jesus. Haley was one of a kind, and unlike anything we've ever seen on the show before. And that's really saying something. The teen appeared on the show to tell the world that she was pregnant with the spawn of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's enough to make you look to the heavens for help, isn't it? Haley clearly had a lot of issues, but definitely believes that she had a bun in the oven, even though doctors and tests told her it wasn't true. The ultrasound she had, courtesy of the doc, didn't do anything to dissuade her either. In fact, she seemed to believe even more that she was the chosen one. As far as the actual ultrasound image, there's absolutely no indication of a pregnancy. No way Haley's giving birth in nine days. Poor Haley had a lot of problems that weren't about to get fixed in a jiffy. Not only was she the next Virgin Mary, but she was adamant that Eminem was her father and she had once appeared on American Idol. That's his daughter Haley. Well, he may have another daughter that he doesn't know about. Needless to say, neither of those things were true either, and she was just a fruit loop. It's a sad situation, as Haley certainly could have had a lot going for her if she joined the real world. Fingers crossed that she will one day. Gypsy's Revenge Was it justice? No. She didn't deserve what happened. The case of Gypsy Rose Blanchard and her mother, Dee Dee, made waves in 2015 and continues to attract interest. In 2017, Doctor visited Gypsy in prison, where she's serving 10 years for her mother's demise. Her conviction largely divides people, as Dee Dee had brought her daughter up to believe that she was gravely ill. She spent her entire life forced into a wheelchair that she didn't need, taking medications that only made her sick and visiting doctors she didn't have to see. Did you ever say to her, Mother, I can walk. Why am I in this wheelchair? No, sir, I never asked that. Dr. Phil likes to dive deep into cases like this, and the interview was long and drawn out. Is Gypsy insane? Who knows? But she certainly cracked after years of being mistreated at the hands of her mother. The way she talks to Phil is unsettlingly calm, including how she talks about the events that unfolded. She probably wouldn't be the way she is if it wasn't for everything that she had experienced, but that's just how the cookie crumbled for Gypsy Rose. Psychological experts have said that she is compromised beyond repair mentally due to her upbringing. It's hardly surprising, but some aspects of the case are quite worrying. Destiny's Disrespect. I don't like being asked multiple questions. Cause then you piss me off, and then I get mad, and then there's a big situation. This 14 year old had a lot of deep rooted emotional problems thanks to some issues with her father. While her mom wanted her to open up, Destiny just couldn't and instead lashed out multiple times and made some worrying threats to her school peers. Dr. Phil did what he could, but it ultimately became clear that the youngster needed to go to treatment. But oh boy, she did not like the sound of that. The producers went in swinging along with a special team basically to make her go even if she didn't agree. Things went from bad to worse in a hot minute and Destiny launched into a foul-mouthed tirade calling her mother every name under the sun. Her mom sat there and took it. Clearly, she was used to her daughter treating her this way, but the counselors intervened. Destiny was enraged, but you could tell there was a lot of hurt there as she eventually started crying and asked her mom to get the help that she needed to. She said, I'm gonna go on counseling. We're gonna sign up together, did you? No! After attempting to throw a chair at her mom and a potted plant at the camera, she was carted off to get the help that she required. She didn't exactly go quietly, but at least she went, and that's something.
right? Gaming Guru. I don't want to sound like I'm a future serial killer, but it's fun. <laughs> This one is really disturbing. We all know that gaming is taking over the world and it can have worrying effects on people. It's really an addiction that can be as hard to break as smoking. For kids, it's even harder. 12-year-old Alex spent all of his free time in front of his console as he believes that the gaming world gives him a level of freedom that he doesn't have in real life. The only problem, it was making him incredibly unpleasant to be around. His family life was terrible, including frequent fights with his parents and some inanimate objects. Like, when I get that mad, you don't come over to hit me, to punish me, to silence me, because I'll hit you. His mom took him to the dock to try and get to the bottom of his anger issues, but Alex claims that his mom just wasn't trying hard enough to control him. Why do you not do what your mother tells you to do? She doesn't really do anything to stop me sometimes. For the most part, Alex took his lumps from Phil, but was it all just an act to get the doc off his back? Mom had a big part to play in it too. Let's face it, if she hadn't started letting the behavior slide, then it wouldn't have got to this point. But hey, what do we know? We're not the experts, but we sure have seen a lot of it, and we're starting to sense a pattern here. Throwdown. Whoa, whoa, that is not even almost okay. Children don't slap their parents, are you kidding me? We're throwing it way back with this one. Eight years ago, this mother-son duo appeared on the show to try and get their relationship figured out. Back then, the format to the show was a lot different, and a large part of the segment included the pair sitting in a room together, telling each other what they hated most about one another. Yeah, that's not going down well, is it? The son, whose name we weren't able to find, constantly accuses his mother of hitting him, but she claimed it was all an elaborate ruse. It certainly looked like the kid was crying wolf, especially as he talked to the cameras while dramatically weeping. It all just seemed a little fake. Later on in the clip, the kid became so frustrated with his mom, who was talking to him pretty calmly, we might add, that he went Bruce Lee on her. We've talked about Let me it's not a good look for anyone, and Phil later called him out for his behavior. It certainly looked like he had a screw loose, that's for sure. Who would treat anyone like that, let alone their mama? It's sad, but it's also a huge indicator that therapy is there for a reason. Brotherly Love What is your favorite cartoon? Family Guy. An American dad that has all that cussing in. Every now and then, you stumble across a kid on Dr. Phil that you know needs some serious psychological help. Sometimes you can tell that teens are just spoiled and need a good talking to, but other times, you need the men in white coats to come and intervene. One eight-year-old spoke to the producers on camera, but his face was partially obstructed so as not to be identified. His parents appeared on stage with the doc to try and see why their son was threatening the family and wrecking his granddad's car. Yeah, he did that. The audience were shaken by what they saw, as were mom and dad who were seeing the footage for the first time. His dad was so taken aback that he thought the team had edited it, which Phil took great offense to. You think I'm a ventriloquist? Or no. What? <laughs> no, sir. Well, I what mean, the hell are you, it's, what it's the hell are you suggesting? No, I'm, it's just shocking. It was a really scary interview to watch, and Phil agreed that the little boy didn't seem right biochemically. We guess that's a fancy term for nuts. Let's hope that the kids got the help that he needed so that he didn't end up hurting anyone or doing anything silly, like getting rid of his sister in the way that he suggested to producers. Get me a sniper rifle. Why? So I can shoot Lord. You see how she likes that. Mads McKenzie. I've seen Mackenzie kick my daughter that has cerebral palsy and hit, and it's not right. Mom brought her nine-year-old daughter Mackenzie on the show, claiming that her behavior has gotten progressively worse since she turned five. Before that, the youngster was a sweet and docile child, but now she's the spawn of Satan. By the time the family reached the dock, Mackenzie has seen tons of psychologists and been diagnosed with three different mood disorders. It definitely wasn't a picnic for mom, who was tired of getting hit and bits by her once cherubic youngster. You're biting me! Stop it! You are biting me! 
What's more, Mackenzie's younger brother was terrified of his sister and her unpredictable mood swings. With no treatment plan in place, it looked like this little girl was going down a route that would lead to prison or even worse. At one point, the nine-year-old ran into the middle of the road, hoping that she would get hit by a car. Mackenzie has told me she wants to die. So when we were at my sister's house, Mackenzie ran into a busy road and just stood there just holding her arms out. Lisa also said that her daughter had given a friend a toxic packet containing poisonous products and told her to taste it. No big deal, right? She even grabs the steering wheel while mom was driving to try and get them off the road. I mean, there are no words for this one. Gormless Gabrielle I feel like I'm completely mature enough to be in a sexual relationship just because I have all this knowledge and understanding. We don't want to be rude here, but honestly, if you're letting your 14-year-old engage in adult activities and smoke pot, then something is seriously wrong. What parents in their right minds would encourage that behavior? The answer is Gabrielle's mom. The teenager went on the show saying that her dad was square for trying to control her while her mom was her best friend because she lets her do everything that she wants. My mom believes that as long as it's making me happy and as long as I'm protected, it's all that matters. When it comes to this wayward youngster, the lights are on, but there's no one home. The doc was trying to get through to her, but she already thought that she knew everything. Maybe it was all pots, but she looked like she was on a different planet and not ready to come down anytime soon. We can't figure out who's more cracked here, Gabrielle or her mom. Mom was totally on her daughter's side throughout the entire thing, while dad and the doc were the only ones speaking sense. That's two padded cells we'll need, please. It might sound a little harsh, but someone has to protect these two from their toxic relationship. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos on your favorite TV shows and tap one of the two videos on screen for another amazing video.